together the Republic Michigami Hawks and the Gwynn Model Towners. Now, here's your host, Dave Goldsmith. Thank you, and welcome to High School Bowl. While well, we have no regional rivalry this week, since both of our teams are from the central UP, the Republic Michigami Hawks bring two seniors, a junior and a sophomore. The Gwynn Model Towners have a rarity, an all-junior squad. They're playing for the right to continue in our tournament and chase the top prize of $2,000 in scholarships and, of course, the UP Championship. So let's meet our teams for this week. We'll begin with Republic. I'm Brian Larla, a senior. I'm Craig Salo, a senior. I'm Dan Murren, a junior and also team captain. I'm Jeff Williams, sophomore. And those are the Hawks. Now let's meet their opponents, the Model Towners. I'm Mark Page, a junior. I'm Steve Norris, a junior. I'm Betsy Sanholm, a junior and also team captain. I'm Matt Boutal, junior. Our scholars for this week. And here are their coaches. Republic's coach is Blaine Betts. Gwyn's is Serona Stevens. And the alternates. Republic's alternate is Bill Wickstrom. Gwyn's are Joe Erickson and Walter Labhart. Our scorekeeper for high school bowl is Gene Olson. Our judge is Dr. Lowell Nudek, professor of biology, Northern Michigan University. And there's that familiar sound, the buzzer to begin the game. Good luck, teams. You're playing for a possible 25-point bonus. Here's your first toss-up. He was first denied and then granted membership in Penn, the International Writers Organization. Some say it was a matter of politics, his 1985 book. Others say it was because he is not a professional writer, but a professional mayor, his 1984 bestseller. Norris. Koch. And he's Ed Koch. You're right for 10 points. Okay, Gwyn's on the board, and here's your bonus, Model Towners. Four state capitals are named after American presidents. For five points apiece and a five-point bonus for all four, name them. State capitals named after presidents. Time is just about up. It is up. Betsy, let's have them. Jefferson City, Missouri. Jackson, Mississippi. Madison, Wisconsin. And I don't have that on. You got three right. If you'd have gotten Lincoln, Nebraska, you'd have had 25, but you got three for 15 points. <laughs> and if you're sitting home thinking, well, I knew Lincoln, Nebraska, why didn't they? It's a lot easier to think when you're sitting at home. Over 1,500 minor planets have been discovered, mostly between Mars and Jupiter. Boutel. Asteroids. And they're called asteroids, right. Or planetoids. And a 30-point bonus comes with that. It's all right to end a sentence with a preposition. You can count on that. But it's more common to begin a title with one. For 15 points apiece, Quinn, supply these prepositional titles. First, a play by Arthur Miller. Title begins with a preposition. Time is up already, Betsy. I'll have to have an answer. No answer. After the fall. Second, a book by Bell Kaufman. Time's up. No answer. Up the downtown. I almost gave a clue, didn't I? Up the down staircase. No bonus points. This World War II pact, signed by Churchill, Stalin, and FDR, supposedly assured Eastern European countries the right of self-determination and did assure Soviet participation in the war against Japan. For 10 points, what pact? Williams. Warsaw pact. Sorry, that's not right. Glenn? Hotel. Yalta Pact. The Yalta Pact, or agreement, right? Ten points. Yalta is where it happened. The Warsaw Pact, Jeff, is a, an arrangement of Eastern European countries under a military grouping. 30-point bonus, Gwyn. Assume for a moment that you're so filthy rich that you burn diamonds for fuel. <coughs> Do that. For 15 points each. First, what gas would a burning diamond form? Time is up. Betsy? Carbon dioxide. That's right, CO2. Okay, here's for another 15 now. At temperatures above 1800 Celsius, diamonds don't so much burn as they convert into another mineral with the same chemical formula. What mineral? Graphite. Graphite, you got 30 points. 
I love those fantasy questions. It's the nation's top advertiser. Spending over $800 million. Say hello. Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble, right. Okay, way to go, Craig. Good interrupt. That's a way to get your team on the board. Here's a 20-point bonus. Of the developed nations, only two currently imprison a higher percentage of its citizens than does the United States. For 10 points each, which nations are these, each of which frequently makes the news for abusing human rights? A list we really didn't want to be part of, right? <laughs> 10 seconds to confer on this one, and they are up. Dan, two countries. Uh, USSR and South Korea. USSR and South Africa. Mm -hmm. 10 points. <laughs> you were halfway there. After all the publicity died down, he quietly finished his master's in aerospace engineering at USC and was a professor at the University of Cincinnati until 1980 when he joined Computing Technologies for Aviation Incorporated. In 1986, he served on the committee investigating the Shuttle Challenger disaster. For 10 points, who is this famous former astronaut? Williams. Neil Armstrong. That's who it is. You got it. 10 points. Neil Armstrong. From where? Anybody know where he's from? Hmm? Audience, anybody? Wapakoneta, Ohio, my mother's hometown. 25-point bonus, Hawks. Among the five inductees into the Professional Hall of Fame in 1985 were the first two Heisman Trophy winners to make it. For 10 points, name one, or for 25 points, name both of these athletes and television personalities. Several clues in that question. Conference time is up, Dan. Two names. Blanda and Staubach. Staubach is right. Roger Staubach. O.J. Simpson was the other one, so you get 10 points. <laughs> he hailed from Oak Park, Illinois, but rose to the status of one of the world's greatest novelists with stories such as The Snows of Kilimanjaro and Big Two-Hearted River. For 10 points, name him, say hello. Hemingway? Ernest Hemingway for 10, right. <laughs> the famous novelist, so we gave them short stories for clues. Hey, 20 point bonus, Hawks. The recent rise of Islamic fundamentalism has helped popularize several Arabic words. Sharia, for instance, means Islamic or Quranic law. For 20 points, I want you to translate jihad. A holy war. It means holy war, and you got 20 points. <laughs> and we have a five-point game. The old French word, that's where our language is, the old French word for an evenly divided game now names a popular TV game show and the legal state of being in peril as a defendant, <laughs> Lorela. Jeopardy. And it's Jeopardy, right. <laughs> 10 points. Question about TV game shows? I don't believe it. 30-point bonus, Hawks. Your three clues to a year will be major events occurring in that year. Name it after one clue and you'll get the 30 points. Two will give you 20. Three will give you 10. First, the U.S. severed relations with Cuba. We want the year. Time's up, Dan. 1963. Nope, sorry, that's not right. It's worth 20 points now. It was the last year in which a president wore mourning clothes and a top hat to his inauguration. 60, Time's up, Dan. 1964. Presidents are inaugurated in odd number of years. No. Finally, Roger Maris hit 61 home runs to break Babe Ruth's record. Time's up, Dan. 67. The answer was in the question. 61. 1961. It means room, and it means room in Italian. Okay? R O O M. And is conventionally categorized as ballad, carol, elegiac, rubiat, burns, Venus Ad and Adonis, and Spenserian. For 10 points, name this division of a poem. Sunholm. Stanza. Stanza is right for 10 points. All right. <clears throat> Matt gave her some skin after that right answer. 20-point bonus. 
the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, or the Caribbean Sea, remember those four, for 10 points apiece, in what bodies of water are these islands found? First, Tobago. Betsy? Caribbean Sea. That's right. Second, Easter Island. Pacific Ocean. You got 20 points. Teams, if you saw a pinniped for 10 points, what water-loving, playful-looking animal, Myron? Starfish. That's not right. Sorry, that's not right. There's no more information. That's the question. What water-loving, playful-looking mammal is it? Sunhole. Platypus? A seal. A seal. The pinnipeds. The depraved villain in Barbarella shares his full name with the rock group who provided the theme song for James Bond's latest adventure, View to a Kill, Sunholm. Duran Duran. It's Duran Duran, right. That's the villain in the group. I read that question four times before I understood it when I first got a hold of it. They got it right away. In 1914, Africa was a colonial jigsaw puzzle, model towners. I'll name two possessions, and for 10 points apiece, you tell me whether it's a European administrator with Spain, Portugal, or Italy. Okay, we'll do these both at the same time. They are Angola and Libya, each worth 10 points. Spain, Portugal, or Italy. Time, Jean, is up. Angola. Spain. Libya. <laughs> Spain. No, we got them both wrong. Angola is Portugal, liberal. Libya is Italy. <coughs> Libya, I liberal? <clears throat> All right. Without its first A, it names a popular fast food delicacy. With this A as its third letter, it names a public square or marketplace common to Italian towns. For 10 points, what's the word? This is Foreign Language Week. Say hello. Arby? No. <laughs> no, sorry. Hotel. Villa? No. Popular fast food delicacy, pizza, with an A, becomes piazza. Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, Uruguay, Peru, and Panama have all joined together in an association to promote peace in Latin America. For 10 points, what name is given to this group? Myron. Pan American Union. I'm sorry, that's not right. Gwyn, anybody want it? They haven't been awfully successful, so I'm not surprised you don't know them. The Contadora. Contadora. There's the buzzer. The first half is over. It's a close game. Gwyn leads it 115 to 80. And now here's our weekly message of importance from Bruce Turner. Thank you, Dave. High School Bowl is the copyrighted format of College Bowl Company Incorporated. This program may not be reproduced in whole or part without the expressed written consent of the College Bowl Company Incorporated. Thank you, Bruce. You may not think that message is important, but if we don't put it on, we can't do the show. And if we don't have an audience in the studio, we can't do the show either. And our audience today is a group of students from Gilbert Elementary School. They're here with their teachers, Lawrence Linna and David Wills. Welcome. A real close game today, 35 points. That's one toss-up and one bonus. So let's meet our players. We'll learn a little bit more about them and find out first what their plans are for the future. We'll start with Republic and Brian Lorela. Brian, what's ahead for you? I plan on attending Northern Michigan University and study accounting. Are you sure you're going to get here on time? I don't know. <laughs> I what? have this terrible habit, habit of procrastinating and when I couldn't figure out something to put down on the bio sheet, the coach uh, yeah. suggested, well, I procrastinated a lot, and I did it again, and I couldn't think of anything creative to say. So at that's what you ended up with. I have some advice for you. Every time you're tempted to procrastinate, put it off. <laughs> Craig Salem. Um, Craig. I've applied to a few colleges within the, within the state, but I'm not too sure where I'm going to go right now or what I'm going to major in, but. Northern's looking as a good possibility right now. Okay, good. How's your German beer can collection coming? Oh, it's pretty much halted since we came back to the States. 
Yeah, I never thought of that. Uh, that's what you mentioned last year, and I thought I'd, I'd get an update on it. It didn't occur to me, of course, he's not. Okay, fine. Nice talking to you, Craig. Dan Myron, the captain. I'd like to attend the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and take some business, law, and liberal, liberal arts. I'm not sure what I want to go into yet, but I'd definitely like to start a record store someday. Last year you were collecting uh, comic books. This year you're collecting music. Yes. Albums. I have about 250 albums and cassettes of popular music. Popular. Okay. Got a favorite? Oh, a bunch. Okay. Jeff Williams. I'd like to try to get into the Navy ROTC and possibly get into aerospace engineering, like Neil Armstrong. Mm -hmm. And if I can't do that, I'd like to try to get to Northern uh, or Tech, preferably Tech for civil engineering, or the ministry. And you're the sophomore on the team. I'm the sophomore. So you've got a few years to decide yet. Now, American history is your mm -hmm. favorite subject. Got a favorite president? Lincoln, probably. Okay, good choice. All right, those are the Hawks. Now we're going to talk to the Model Towners and find out what lies ahead for them. And we'll start with Mark LePage. I'd like to enter the pre-medical program at University of Michigan. Uh, especially in medicine? Uh, maybe cardiology. Why do you want to be a doctor, Mark? Help people. And uh, I don't know, I like the idea of going to an office and being in business for myself. Okay, you've helped people recently by not seriously injuring anyone while you were driving? Yeah. It's a major accomplishment. Yeah. You're really that bad a driver. Yeah. You see Mark LePage coming down the road, pull off. All right. Good talking to you. Steve Norris. Uh, I plan to go to Georgia Tech um, and major in mechanical engineering. Why Georgia Tech? Well, mainly because I wanted to pay out of state tax. I'm from there. and. Uh, well, that's why you're the expert on the South. Yes, sir. I've lived there. For almost 16 years. In the this south. is quite quite a change. Have you gotten used to the snow and cold yet? Oh. <laughs> All right. So, so people never get used to the snow and the cold. All right. Good having you on the team, Steve. The captain, Betsy Sunholt. I, I hope to attend the University of Michigan and eventually go on to become a math teacher, high school math teacher. High school math teacher. If you become a high school math teacher, are you going to take your bottles of nail polish to school with you? I don't know if, if the students asked me to, I would. <laughs> now, when you filled out your bio sheet, you said you had 109 bottles. Has that grown since then? I have 111 now. 111. Could you want to tell us the flavors that you've added, the, the two recent uh, ones? <laughs> chocolate soda and um, some pink. I can't remember some, what exactly. Some pink. <laughs> okay. Some kind of pink. All right. Matt Lutell. I'd like to go to the University of Michigan and major in a science degree. I'm not sure which course of study, though. Got a lifestyle picked out for yourself? Mm. Not really. Well, let, let me put it this way. You want to own a Porsche or a BMW? <coughs> um, Porsche. Porsche, okay. <laughs> I knew I'd get an answer with that. When you see our players are not just brains, they're human beings, too. And we've talked to them and met our teams for this week. One fifteen to eighty. Gwyn leads it. Here we go. The second half is about to begin. It was about four hundred fifty feet long, seventy-five feet wide, and forty-five feet high, and is traditionally believed to have ended up on Mount Ararat. For ten points, Salo. Noah's Ark. It was Noah's Ark, right? And it says here it was made of gopher wood. Gopher wood. That's what Noah said when they were building it. Gopher wood, and we'll. This is an audio question, Hawks, so listen carefully. The following selection is from one of the best known musicals of all time. For 10 points each, I want you to name the film and the actress who starred in it. Dan? The movie was The Wizard of Oz, and the actress was Judy Garland. And you've got 20 points. Dr. Nudek, would you have accepted Margaret Hamilton? <laughs> no? <laughs> All right. The first ran from 1928 to 1932, inclusive. The second from 1933 to 1937, inclusive. And the third from 1938 to 1942, inclusive. For 10 points, what name was given to these three successive plans to reorganize the economy of the Soviet Union? 
Hotel. Five-year plan. That's what they were called. <laughs> Five-year plan. All right. 20-point bonus model towners. Paleo, <coughs> P-A-L-E-O, is the Greek prefix meaning ancient. For 10 points apiece, identify these paleo words. First, it is the study of ancient handwritten <coughs> material. <coughs> ancient handwritten material. Time's up, Betsy. Hieroglyphics. <laughs> Paleography. Second, it was the geologic era which included the Devonian, Permian, and Mississippian periods. Paleozoic. Beg your pardon? Paleozoic. And was the Paleozoic, right, you got 10. <laughs> In chemistry, the verb means to change by chemical reaction one compound to another, or to change the physical nature of a material to a more useful material. For 10 points, what is this term also used to designate a person who changes religions? LePage. Convert. Convert is right. <laughs> convert to convert. When you change from a verb to a noun, you usually change the accent on a word. And you earned a 30-point bonus for your team for that, Mark. The earliest known works of art were, also, were the famous Altamira and Lasco prehistoric cave paintings of bisons, bulls, and horses sketched in red and black for 15 points each. Name either of the counties in which of these works are found. Sorry, that's not right. That can't be right. This has to be 30 points or nothing. And it's not counties, it's countries. Wonderful question. Gwen, are you clear on this? I want either of the countries. There were, either one is worth 30 points. France. Beg your pardon? France. France or Spain, you got 30 points. It is the shallowest of the five great lakes. Salo. Lake Erie. It's Lake Erie, right. All right, we're cooking now. For 10 points each and a five point bonus, rise to the occasion, Hawks, and tell me who wrote first, The Rise of American Civilization. No answer? Dan? No answer. That was Charles and Mary Beard. Second, who wrote The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich? Still worth 10. Dan? Johnson. William Shirer. He was born in Bavaria in 1840 and died in Ecuador in 1902, but spent most of his life in the U.S., where his drawings helped break the power. Myron. Picasso. Is not right. Sorry, it's an interrupt. It'll cost you five. Where his drawings helped break the power of Tammany Hall. For 10 points, who was this cartoonist? Let me, I can give you the rest of it who created the Republican elephant and the Democratic donkey. Thomas Nast. He was Thomas Nast. You're right. <laughs> OK, that is a big swing question there. 20 point bonus goes with that. One of the living, Gwen, was recorded by a female vocalist from the 1960s who gained popularity with her then husband, Ike. Her 1980s comeback is a sensation in the music business for 20 points. Name her. Tina Turner. She's Tina Turner, and you got 20 points. He married an already married woman in 1791 in the mistaken belief that she was legally divorced, a scandal which haunted him until his wife's death in 1828, the year in which he was elected to the White House. Norris. Andrew Jackson. Again? Andrew Jackson. And he was Andy Jackson, right, for 10. <laughs> Andrew Jackson, elected in 1828. And here's your 20-point bonus, Model Towners, about presidents again. Lyndon Baines Johnson was more than a little taken with his initials. As if the LBJ ranch wasn't enough, he called his wife and his dog by names with the LBJ initials and named both of his daughters so they would be LBJs too. For five points each, name these four other LBJs. In no particular order, you don't have to distinguish between his wife and the dog. Betsy? <laughs> Lady Bird. Keep coming. Um, Linda Betty. No answer. For the rest. Okay. <laughs> Nothing else. Okay. Lady, uh, Lady Bird is right. That was his wife. Linda Bird was one of the daughters. Lucy Baines was one of the other daughters. And the dog, Little Beagle. Five points. 
he had a beaver, he would have probably called a little beaver, wouldn't he? This derivative of whist first appeared around 1850 in Istanbul and soon became all the rage. Myron. Canasta. Uh, not right, Dan, sorry. It's an interrupt, cost you five. Became a rage along the French Riviera. For 10 points, name this now universal card game, which is divided into its auction and contract varieties. You'll have to buzz. Okay, I'm going to drop it. Audience? Bridge. Bridge. It originally named a cask of water with a small opening for dipping out its contents, a common object aboard ships. Like the modern office water cooler, it became the gathering place for gossips. For 10 points, what is this three-syllable term for Navy gossip? Salo. Scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt, right. <coughs> right on the button, and don't break the button, Craig. In a recent Department of Education news conference about the values of memorization, Secretary Bennett and President Reagan began an impromptu recitation of a popular poem, beginning, there are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. For 20 points, Hawks, name this poem by Robert W. Service. Time's up, Dan. You got an answer? Things that go bump in the night. No, the famous old story poem, The Cremation of Sam McGee. Not to be confused with the shooting of Dan McGrew. This alkaline earth element is used to remove traces of gases from vacuum tubes and to make your insides stand out on x-ray photos. For 10 points, name this 56th element in the periodic table. Salo. Radium? No. Not right, sorry. Glenn, Butel. Calcium. Butel. Calcium. No. Bury him. There's the buzzer. The game is over. Gwynn wins it 220 to 120. <laughs> well, Hawks, as so often happens, we had two separate halves there, and you played very well the first half, and things got away from you in the second half. You also got a couple of hard bonuses there. And you see what I told you in the, in the preparation was true. They got the Tina Turner bonus, and you got the bonus on American authors. So congratulations on playing a good game. Let's see, Brian, or I'm sorry, Dan and Jeff, you'll be back next year. Uh, Brian and Craig, good luck in the future. Gwyn, congratulations. That was a good win there. You came on strong in the second half. You're a good team. Memorize the presidents. Memorize the periodic table. You'd have gotten that barium one. Congratulations on winning your first game here on High School Bowl. You'll come back in the second round and play next week's winner. And we hope you'll join us next week when Norway meets Rapid River on High School Bowl. And until then, this is Dave Goldsmith reminding you that nothing you learn is ever wasted. All questions used in High School Bowl competition are researched and authenticated by the magazine editorial research department of Time Incorporated. The preceding program was produced through the facilities of WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television. High School Bowl was created by Don Reed. Production funding for High School Bowl was provided in part by the Mead Corporation.